Hello, scholars. Welcome back. Mr. Hinkle here talking about physical oceanography, but ocean density really is a link that shows us the physical characteristics of the ocean are not isolated from the chemical characteristics of the ocean. And we really get to see this exemplified through how density behaves within the oceans. Let's analyze the characteristics of ocean density discuss impacts to circulation and also to marine life. So ocean density is the mass of seawater per unit volume. And we measure it in cubic centimeters per gram or cubic meters per kilogram. It's really important for ocean circulation. This is like the biggest thing, the global conveyor belt of oceanic circulation, thermohaline circulation, helps to mix, helps distribute marine life, drives ocean currents, influences heat distribution, and regulates Earth's climate. Whoa! I thought we were talking about density. We are, but density in the ocean plays a wildly important role. So to measure, we drop instruments on the ground, conduct it on the ground, in the ocean in the ocean water, that's for sure. Conductivity, temperature, depth, instruments, CTDs. The opening page, here's a bunch of researchers dropping a CTD in the ocean so that they can record a bunch of characteristics, conductivity, temperature, depth, and then there's a series of calculations that can help to calculate density, can calculate uh, pressure, can understand the properties of the physical properties of the ocean. Another really important instrument is called an Argo float. These instruments hover, they drift with ocean currents, and then periodically dive down, still drifting with ocean currents, come back up, and as soon as they come back up to the surface, boom, they send that info right out to satellites. Those satellites record it almost real time, and we can use these two instruments together along with satellite data. This is kind of the name of the game for uh, trying to measure complex systems at scale. You have really high accuracy uh, recording instruments, the CTD, the Argo floats. And then in parallel with satellites that give you a broad lower resolution overview, we can develop these models to understand how these various factors, temperature, density, salinity, uh, vary through space and time. Let's get back to density. So kind of like salinity and temperature, there is a vertical structure to density. And it starts here at the surface of the Earth. There's a rapid increase, and then it becomes relatively stable. So up here, the mixed layer, just like with the temperature, just like with the salinity, the mixed layer drops down into what is called the halocline. That's OK. It's OK. I've got just a little bit more to finish up this lecture, and then we'll be good. OK. So this is not called the halocline. It's actually called pycnocline. I got a little bit distracted. Forgot what I was talking about, but I'm going to keep going with it. It's no big deal. So the pycnocline is this rapid increase in density from the mixed layer. And then we get into the deep ocean. We're in the deep ocean. It's relatively stable. If we could review a little bit for temperature, we had the thermocline, which was a rapid decrease in temperature at this same depth. And then for salinity, we had the halocline. And it is temperature and salinity that are going to be the biggest factors affecting density in the ocean. And they all follow this vertical structure where, right near the surface, there's the mixed layer a rapid change with depth to about one kilometer or 1,000 meters deep. And then below, it becomes relatively constant in the deep ocean. Here we can see, 
talk about the graphs that we've got right here. So here we can see temperature, mixed layer, thermocline, rapid decrease, and then relatively constant to about four degrees. Salinity starts a little bit higher. There's a rapid decrease, and then it becomes constant with an average of about 35. This is in parts per thousand. And then density, relatively constant up near the surface in the mixed layer, rapid increase, and then relatively constant. So two biggest factors are going to be temperature and salinity. Pressure, you would think, plays a big role because of how much uh, pressure changes with depth, but it has a minor impact in relation to the effects of temperature and salinity on ocean density. <clears throat> so what does this do then? Is it creates distinct layers or water masses that provide a vertical stratification to ocean depth. There's areas where deep water originates near the North Pole, near the South Pole, uh, but there is a layering that you can see from the top to the bottom based on density differences where water masses with different densities remain separate. This is important because it affects nutrient mixing and oxygen levels. Nutrients and oxygen being two key components for primary productivity and for all life that is going to exist in the oceans. The last thing that ocean density is really important for is driving a global conveyor belt of ocean circulation called thermohaline circulation. So if we write this word on the board, thermohaline, and we look at the parts of this word. Therm means heat, thermocline, thermo. Haline means salt or salinity. Halocline. Then what we have here is circulation that is dependent on the temperature and the salinity of the oceans. This connects surface currents, which are driven by wind, with deep ocean currents that is created and driven by density into the global conveyor belt of ocean circulation, which we've got a whole lot more coming on that topic. I've got multiple lectures on surface currents, deep currents, ocean circulation, thermohaline circulation. So stay tuned, join my lectures over there. I can't wait for those. All right, so ocean density is very highly correlated with temperature and salinity. And this plays a key role in the distribution and movement of all of Earth's water, which we can sum up in oceanic circulation that then has impacts on marine life and global climate. So this is ocean density, one of our key topics in physical oceanography. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again.